Hi everyone, my name is Patty and this is supposed to provide you with hopefully some good basic steps to chalk painting. Um, I don't do anything professionally, I just love to really be creative at home and I love to paint. So I decided that I wanted to use and try the Annie Sloan chalk paint, which I will tell you, um, I have decided that I will never paint another piece of furniture without this chalk paint ever because it is so wonderful to work with. This video is supposed to be basic instructions, hopefully from beginning to end, on painting with chalk paint. Uh, I looked at a lot of videos online and there were wonderful videos, but there were some basic steps that I had questions on that I couldn't find the answer to. So I decided to do a video on my own. I just completed this piece behind me. Um, it was so easy to do. It was actually, oh, kind of a yellowed beige. And right around the trim here were, was some, some gold, kind of gold trim. And I decided I wanted to paint this out in a turquoise to go in a room that we've just redone. So I chose Providence, which is the Annie Sloan color. And I'll get to that more in a moment. Um, I just completed this piece and I have many more pieces that I want to do. I can assure you of that. But what I wanted to go over is the, the basic tools that you will need to paint a piece of furniture like this. You'll need your Annie Smith, excuse me, Annie Smith, you'll need your Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, this happens to be Providence. This is the color that I used, which actually is probably a little more turquoise um, than it looks in this video for some reason. It seems like all the pictures I've seen that the pieces look a little more blue toned than what they really are. This is a quart. This is a quart of paint. And at the store I bought it at, which there's only two where I live, it was $38.95. And you think, goodness gracious, a quart of paint for $38.95. I will tell you, by the time I put two coats on this um, chest of drawers, which is a five drawer, I used this much of the paint can. Literally, this much of the paint can. That's it. It is amazing how far it goes. So that is the paint I chose. The most difficult thing that I had to decide is what color, because all the colors are so great. This is the second thing that you need, which is Annie Sloan Soft Wax. I happened to buy this in, uh, where does it say here, clear. There is also a dark wax, and I'll tell you more about the dark, dark wax in a moment. What you need to know is that this five chest drawer out of this uh, small can, here are the differences in the size of the cans right here for the paint and the wax. By the time I finished waxing, this is how much wax I had used, if you can tell out of that. Literally, I have a lot of wax left. Um, I could probably get another, oh, I would say at least two or three painting pieces out of the wax that I have left, depending on what their size is. Uh, but I also saw a video <clears throat> online that this can of chalk paint actually did uh, a chest, six chairs to a dining room table, the dining room table itself, and then another small table. So this is how far this quart of paint will go. So it, it is definitely worth the investment. The next thing I had to decide is what I wanted to do regarding the application of this and the brushes that I used because the Annie Sloan brushes are very good brushes but they're $32, $34 a piece and I didn't want to spend that much money. Um, so in speaking with a friend, she said that she actually used a paintbrush that she had around the house. So I'll show you what I used and then you can make a decision on what you want to do. I actually used a, um, oh it was probably a two and a half inch purdy paintbrush that's good for all types that's good for all types of paint that's what I used and uh, the application went on very simply with this paintbrush then one of the things that you can do in applying the wax afterwards is you can do that with just a cloth you can use a clean cloth 
that you've identified that is very clean, I might add, or you can get a brush to wax with. Um, the Annie Sloan brush that you wax with is probably about this big around. The one that I bought, which actually worked very, very well, is a Zybra Pro Painter brush, a one inch square. That's the biggest I could find, and this is what it looks like. I simply picked it up at, at my favorite place, Home Depot, and came back to work with it for the first time. And it's you can see that it's square on the end, um, really good brush and it's great at getting in the grooves uh, in furniture that has indention or definition to it at all. So we've taken care of that. Then I picked up, which I didn't already have, a comb so I could always comb my uh, paint out of my brushes and it works very well. I've never used it before. I don't know why. I've been painting for years. A uh, sanding block, not that you need it, but if you want to do some distressing or like me, I had to get a piece of tape off the top of this piece before I ever started painting it. You may want a light sanding block or you can go heavier than that. And then I also had these little triangles that I actually put the feet of the dresser on top of so it would stand up and I could get underneath it the way I wanted to. So there are all of the supplies that you need in painting this. Very simple and a drop cloth to put this on top of. Um, the next step simply is taking all of the drawers out, taking all of the hardware off, setting them aside, knowing where you want to paint them on a drop cloth as well, and then start your process. I will tell you this paint does not uh, have any odor to it. It does not smell I painted in the middle of my living room on a drop cloth and was so glad that I did. Um, so then you don't have to worry about being outside or in the garage and dust. There's a lot of dust where I live um, and wind. So you don't have to worry about anything getting on the piece. From there, I simply just started the process of painting the piece, literally dipping it down in the can. I'm sorry I don't have this to show you. I didn't know it would be so easy or I would have taped it all along. Um, dipping the, the brush in the can and literally this is the, I'll, I'll do it this way, this is the stroke that you're going to use. Uh, obviously these drawers were pulled out when I painted them, but this is the stroke you're going to use. Get down inside there, get down inside there. Seriously, you've got some indentions so you can even tap in with the paint, go back over. I did one coat of the Providence all over the chest. I covered all the drawers. It dries pretty immediately. So right after I finished, I was able to go back and do a second coat. Um, as long as you see it's dry, you can go right over it. The thing that is so great about chalk paint is with latex paint, you know how you've, you've painted and then if you touch it, if you go back over it before it dries, you completely ruin it. Your brush strokes are all dug in and it becomes very rough. You do not have that problem with Annie Sloan chalk paint. I'm telling you, it is wonderful to work with. I could have painted this and moved on to another side of the cabinet and then see, ooh, I need to hit that again, grab paint and go right over it and it all just melts into the layers that you've painted. It is beautiful, so easy, so easy. So I've completely finished painting out the cabinet. I uh, came back over, I did a second coat. I probably waited just because I didn't know. I have a girlfriend who went right to the waxing. I actually did this piece by myself. Um, but I waited probably 30 minutes just so I would know for sure. You really don't have to wait that long, 15, 30 minutes. Then you come back in, and in my case, I used the, the um, uh, wax. <clears throat> and you'll, you'll tell before I go on, this is a really basic piece because I did not distress it at any point. Um, I didn't put the dark wax on it and that's something that I need to share with you a little bit more. Annie Sloan comes in two types of wax that I know of. One is clear, which is what I've put on this cabinet. 
The other is dark wax, and you can tell when you go to look for it. It says dark right down there. Um, had I put dark wax on this cabinet, what I would have done first is, getting back to the wax technique, I would have um, used my wax. I would have put, get the brush off of there. I would have gone down inside the wax, and literally, this is the way you put the wax on. You put the, the wax on, the stroke is exactly the same as you use for the paint. And you go all down in the crevices, all over it, all over it, all over it. And what I did is um, I finished waxing all of the drawers that I had out of the cabinet. And once I finished waxing them, I went right back with a cloth and I started pulling it off. This is exactly how you do the strokes to pull it off. You go down inside, pull it off, pull it off, pull it off. The more I continued to pull wax off, the more wax I got on my cloth. And it, I found over time that it worked better that as I got a lot of wax on this, when I went to finish out the whole cabinet and the sides of the cabinets, um, because you know I had the drawers pulled out at the time, um, I went to another cloth to make sure that I just wasn't putting more wax back on. So have a couple of cloths that probably will do well for you depending on how big your piece is. And you literally are just wiping the wax off, wiping the wax off time and time and time again. Now, if you've decided you want a deeper um, uh, look with a little more definition in your cabinet, in this case, then what you would do is take the Annie Sloan dark wax on top of the clear wax. Everything you do has to have clear wax on it as an end result, but if you want to deepen it up, then you put the dark wax on top of that. I did not do that on this cabinet, but the same thing would apply. I would take, I would take my brush into the, the dark wax and do the same thing, do the same thing, or or I could simply put a little on a cloth and start rubbing it in just the areas that I wanted darkened up. Just the areas that I wanted darkened up. And then you quickly start taking the dark wax off. If for some reason you get too much dark wax in an area, you put more clear wax on top of it and it loosens it up and you take it right off. Um, I haven't tried it, but I have seen many videos, and that's the exact technique that they do. Um, so, when you have finished, in this case, in my case, the clear wax, literally, you let it dry. I saw a video from a woman who said that she let it dry for about an hour, and then she took it in, and it was a dining room, it was a coffee table and she took it in her living room and within an hour her little boy had it trashed out because he had run toy trucks on top of it and things like that so what I decided to do is to just let it sit where I painted it for about oh 24 plus hours and then I moved it in and put it together um 